Hello guys, welcome to episode 14 of our Access Control Explanatory Series. In this episode, we are going to go over AC17 Remote Access. We skipped over the AC16 Security Attribute because it is not selected for all the three control baselines. But as always, a free way to support the channel is by hitting the subscribe button to help grow the channel if you haven't done so already. And I appreciate the support. And also do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. Remote access is the ability to access information system from a remote location. This ability is handy for off-site workers, travelers, and those who work out of office. This control is put in place to ensure that only authorized remote access connections occur to the organizational network and the component. This control is selected for all the control baselines, that is the low, moderate, and the high baselines. In row 4, we have AC17, which is the remote access being selected for the low baseline, the moderate baseline, and the high baseline, in addition to the control enhancement for the moderate and the high baseline. Likewise, in row 5, we have AC17 remote access being selected for all the three baselines. Now, let's look at the difference between the remote desktop RDP versus the virtual private network, the VPN. A VPN allows access to secure networks, whereas the RDP provides remote access to a computer or a specific device on the network. VPNs generally require significant amount of bandwidth. VPN does not compress or optimize data. File size can have an impact on performance, but VPNs are great on security. With RDP, all processing occurs on the remote computer. Only the screen images, the keystrokes, and the mouse clicks are transmitted across the RDP connection. That makes it greatly reduce the bandwidth requirement. In short, in RDP, everything is happening on the network while the user merely sees these activities via the RDP connection. Note, VPN actions to a system is not considered remote access. Once the user is authenticated to the network through the VPN, the user access is considered local access and not remote access. However, the RDP is considered a remote access to a device on the network. Now let's look at the security control requirement explanation for AC17 in the Ref5. AC17 Remote Access The control A. Establish and document usage restriction, configuration or connection requirements, and implementation guidance for each type of remote access allowed. And B. Authorize each type of remote access to the system prior to allowing such connections. The discussion Remote access is access to the organizational systems or processing acting on behalf of the user that communicate through external networks such as the internet. Type of remote access include the dial-up, broadband, or the wireless. Organization use encrypted virtual private networks, VPN, to enhance confidentiality and integrity for remote connection. So that means even if you're using an RDP, you can also leverage the VPN to provide extra security. But note, VPN itself is not considered a remote connection but it's just an encrypted tunnel that allow you to provide extra security for your remote connection to your organizational network and devices. The use of encrypted VPNs provides sufficient assurance to the organization that it can effectively treat such connection as internal networks if the cryptographic mechanism used are implemented in accordance with applicable laws executive orders, directives, regulations, policy, standards, and guidelines. Still, VPN connection traverse external networks, and the encrypted VPN does not enhance the availability of remote connection. VPN with encrypted tunnels can also affect the ability to adequately monitor network communications traffic for malicious code. 
remote access control applies to systems other than public web servers or systems designed for public access. Authorization for each remote access type addresses authorization prior to allowing remote access without specifying the specific formats for such authorization. While organizations may use information exchange and system connection security agreement to manage remote access connection to other system, such agreements are addressed as part of CA3. CA3 is the interconnections, right? Enforcing access restriction for remote access is addressed via the AC3, which is the access enforcement. AC17 has 10 control enhancement. Now let's look at the control requirement simplification. This control is to ensure that only the users authorized to remotely access the information system are doing that and the connections occur only to the authorized organizational network and systems. What are some of the benefits of remote access? Remote access makes collaboration easy and increases productivity when office travel is not feasible. Now let's look at the control assessment approach. And as with all the controls that we've seen so far, to ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional or the operational effectiveness, we do the following. We obtain and examine the access control policy and procedure, the dash one control, and then the SSP. We review the organizational policy detailing the remote access process, list of all authorized users, usage restrictions, connection requirements, and implementation guidance, and review the log to verify remote connections. If possible, obtain permissions from the client to attempt a remote connection and authentication to see if it works and you are only authenticated to whatever resources were specified during the request. This will help you to validate the uh, procedure in place to make sure the remote access is actually being monitored. And then also the list of users who are allowed. Remember, if not all the users are allowed to be able to remote into uh, a specific device on the network of the organization, make sure those users all have the need. That is the least privilege. They have the need to remotely access those resources. If they don't have any permission, so when you review the, the users, the list of users, make sure you also review the access authorization with a written signature, you know, even if it's a ticket, but there should be some sort of an, a, a signature approval or approving those users to actually be able to remotely access the system. That's it for this episode. Our next episode will be on AC18 wireless access. If you like this control series, you can support me to create more of these videos by subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm to expose these videos to more people who might benefit from these videos as well. And always remember, until you spread your wings, you will never know how high you can fly. I will see you in our next video. Thank you.